Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. This video is for my Mac users. I had a number of subscribers and viewers that were asking questions about running a meeting using Microsoft Teams in a Mac environment. So there were some folks that were experiencing some challenges. They were wondering where certain features were or why certain features weren't working for them. Well, there are a couple of things to bear in mind and in this video, I'm going to go through those and show you how to run a meeting using a Mac in Microsoft Teams. Let's go have a look. All right, here I am on my Mac and I'm going to go into a whiteboard. Now, I'm not going to use the Microsoft whiteboard. <clears throat> I'm going to use Autodesk Sketchbook. I did a previous video comparing the Microsoft whiteboard to Sketchbook and on a Mac computer, the uh, Microsoft whiteboard isn't really as full featured. Um, obviously, the Sketchbook is extraordinarily full featured. It's really designed for artists, but anyways, that's another topic. What I want to talk about here is running a Microsoft team meeting on my Mac. And it's really important to understand with Microsoft Teams, there are three levels of administration. At the top level, you have your IT department and your IT department has control over a whole bunch of different settings. So they can determine whether anybody in the entire organization is allowed to use backgrounds, whether anybody in the entire organization is allowed to install applications. So it's important to understand what your IT department does and does not permit. One of the things I often do is I ask myself, okay, if I can do this in Windows, why can't I do it in Mac? And if they've disabled it for the organization, you won't be able to do it in either operating system. The other one, level of administration is we have our meeting organizer. So you have your meeting organizer and your meeting organizer also has control over certain settings in terms of what people can do within their team. And the meeting organizer can set those permissions. Uh, what they're going to do is set those at the team level. So when they create the team, there's a whole bunch of settings in teams where they can restrict or allow certain behaviors. Finally, we have the participants in the team and the people participating in the team can either be presenters or they can be guests. Now, guests by default have very limited permissions and presenters have a little bit more. So it is a little bit confusing, but as you watch this video, if there's something you see me do and you cannot do it, then chances are it has been set at the team level or through your IT department and you need to contact them to see whether that feature is enabled. What I would do is I would first ask myself whether I was a guest or a full participant. If I was a full participant and I couldn't do something, then I know I need to look at the organizer or I need to go to my IT department. Okay, and then the other thing you could also do is say, well, can I do it in the Windows environment? Because if you can do something in Windows, but you can't do it in Mac, it may be a limitation of the Mac, or it might be something, uh, again, that, uh, that you're not quite doing correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And let's have a look at starting up a team meeting. So I've downloaded and I've gone into one of my teams. I'm in my astronomy class and I'm in my meeting practice channel. So here on my Mac, I'm going to start a meeting. Now, before I do that, let me just go in and show you. If I go into the team, I can manage the team. This is where I can go in and I can determine who's an owner, who's a member, and who's a guest. So we're going to have Clark Kent join us, Superman, and you'll notice they're in as a member. If they were in as an owner, they would have more permissions. If they're in as a member, they have quite a few permissions. There is another level in here where I could add a guest. I don't have a guest. Under here, I can see um, things like settings where I can go in and this is where we have all sorts of things. So for example, if I can't use a GIF, right, or I can't use certain GIFs, it's because when I set up this team, I didn't allow you to. I can choose what's happening in here. So I have a lot of control over here and that is the team uh, organizer settings. And of course, if I have IT departments, they come into play. So I'm going in and I'm going to start a new meeting. So let's have a meeting. Now, of course, by 
default, it's going to you know put my webcam on, so I'm waving at you, and uh, I'm going to turn the webcam off for for a reason. You'll notice I I'm not able to change my background like I am in Windows, and I'm not able to mute the audio like I am in Windows. As soon as I go into the meeting, though, those options will appear. So I can now go in and mute my audio if I wish, and I can go in and I can work with backgrounds. I'm going to show you that. So a couple of I'll just mute my audio because I don't want to get feedback. So I'm recording on a different device. So here is my share tray. Here is my action tray. Here is my conversation tray, and here I can see my participants. I'm going to go into my action tray first. Let's do that first. I can modify my device settings, show notes, look at details for the meeting, go into full screen, or raise my hand. These are all elements of participating in the meeting. Here is where I can show my background effects. Can't show it before I'm in the meeting, but I can show it here while I am sort of in the meeting. If I go into show background effects, You'll notice I can add new. I can take off any background effects that I have. I can go in and choose, oh, it's me again. Hello, everybody. So I'll mute my video. Um, I can go in and I can choose any of the Microsoft effects. In fact, you know what, let's put all my video. So I will smile at you. You can see all my comic books. Uh, so I'll go in here and I can change the background to one of the Microsoft ones. I can preview it. So I can see what it'll look like down in the window there. And if I like it, I can turn it on. And now I'm in a in a sort of a little uh, home office, I guess. Now, I can also add new effects in here. For example, let's say I want to put an image in here. That's the West Coast. Let's see what I have here. So this is the city I live in. Here is Calgary. So I'm going to put Calgary in there. Now I can scroll down to the bottom. There's Calgary. Preview it. And here I am. Calgary at night, right? So I've got Calgary at night. Previously, I put in the Rocky Mountains here. I can preview it. And I've got to Jack Lake, I've got the Rocky Mountains here. So you can see that I can put in different background effects. Now you might say, again, I had a number of uh, viewers saying, hey, I don't have background effects. That's probably something your IT department is controlling because you should have background effects. Now I will also point out that for this particular computer, I'm using Mac OS Catalina version 10.15.7. I have a little bit of an older MacBook. If I get... Uh, well, like a million views, then I can go out and buy a new MacBook. So share this with everybody. Like this video. Make sure that everybody watches it. One million views away from Frank. Get, I don't even know if I'd get a MacBook out of that. But anyways, the idea is that uh, um, I, I don't have a new MacBook. The newer MacBooks I've heard, there may be some issues around sharing and such. I can't test that until I get a new MacBook. But for now, everything you're seeing, I'm doing on this machine. Uh, if I go into... Uh, you know, live captions, I can go into key that. I can start recording if, if, again, if recording is something that my IT department permits. You'll see that I'm now recording this meeting. Everybody should be informed that I'm recording. And then when I'm done, I can go in and I can stop recording. And that will be saved to Microsoft Stream through my IT department. Okay, so we saw the more actions menu is fully featured. I can turn off by other incoming video as well. I can also share my screen. So when I go in to share my screen, I went in to share it and notice there's nothing here. I'm like, oh, what's going on? You can't share anything. There's a little whiteboard. I want to share PowerPoint, for example. So this is a little weird thing that, we, that I've discovered in the Mac world. If I go in and see how I have PowerPoint here, I'm going to open up PowerPoint. And I've got just this sample template here on the International Space Station. And I'm going to go in and go back to my meeting. Now when I go into my meeting, if I turn off the share... I'm going to go into the share tray. Notice because PowerPoint is maximized on my screen or open on my screen, I can now share it. So I can share that open presentation. And now anybody else that's in the meeting will see that. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to go to another computer here on the side here. And we're going to have Clark Kent come in and join this meeting. And what I'm going to do now is also on the other computer, I'm just going to start recording it so that we also have... Uh, I can interleave the recordings here. So I'm going to go in, and you'll notice that Clark Kent's going to come in. And Clark Kent, I see him, and he is seeing on his screen, I'm just going to switch between the two, International Space Station. And if I go into presentation on my computer, I'm going into the presentation, and Clark is going to see my presentation as well. 
So as I go through, he'll see the presentation. Now, one of the things on a, on a Mac is if I use three fingers on my trackpad and scroll up, that's going to show my desktop. I can switch over to my meeting again, and you can see I can see my participants in here. I, I can still have Clark on his screen watching my presentation, but this gives me the ability to go think, to do things like go into a chat, and I can say something like, hello, Clark. Clark will see that. And when Clark sees that, he'll see that on his screen. He'll see that hello, Clark comes in. He can reply back to me on my other computer. Hello, Frank. And we can have a conversation here. Now, you will notice that with Clark here, underneath the meeting, he, um, let's have to go back to the meeting here. So he, his meeting notes doesn't have the chat window unless he opens it up. And then you'll see that he also has the sidebar chat window. So on my Windows computer here, you'll notice that my meeting experience is separated um, and I can go in and he can do all sorts of cool stuff. If he sends me a GIF, maybe he says something like space, right? So we go in there space and he sends me a GIF of space and you can see that that shows up over here. So we're communicating and uh, I'll just close that back up there. Okay, so if I wanna go in, I can present to Clark Clark sees my presentation over uh, with PowerPoint. I can end my presentation. So now it's still sharing out the PowerPoint. I can go into my meeting and I can go in and I can stop sharing the PowerPoint. And he's just seeing my, either my, well, I'll put my webcam up. So I'll just wave at Clark with my background and then I'll stop sharing that. Okay, so that's how I can share out programs. So the, the little bit of the trick there, if I go back to sharing, let's go back to sharing. Notice that I'm not sharing out things like my sketchpad. If I go into sketchbook, now it's full screen. I'm going to go back to my meeting. It's not there. Hey, where are you, sketchbook? Stop sharing. Start sharing. And you'll notice that the sketchbook is now there. And I'm now sharing that out with Clark. That'll present it out to him. In fact, Clark can even come in and request control of that. I can allow Clark to have control of that. Clark can now go in and, you know, draw on that board there. He just did some circle work there. And then when Clark's done, he can stop control. Okay, and we can go in and I can stop presenting that out. And we're back to my regular meeting. Okay, so those are a few of the questions that I got regarding the Mac environment. Hopefully by going through this demo, um, I went through maybe a few things were a little quick, maybe a few things were a little slow, I don't know. You can comment down below if there's anything else that you'd like me to show you here. But I do hope that shows you how I can run a Microsoft meeting from a Mac environment. I can share out programs. I can change my background. I can work with the webcam. Um, and I can do all of the things that I can do, or most of the things that I can do in a Windows-driven uh, meeting. The only thing that I would say is that if you're having any problems with that, one, check with the meeting team, meeting organizer slash team creator, or two, check with your IT department. Both of those are, are groups that can limit your ability to do things. I hope that was useful for you. If it was, hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this, subscribe for more tips like this, and share with colleagues that might benefit from this information. I appreciate your watching this video. Thank you so much. Here are some other videos that might be of interest to you. See you in the next video.